You won't believe just how easy it is to create this 3D loop. And the good news is it will only take you 10 minutes from start to finish. In this video, we're going to be using Spline, a free 3D web-based app. Spline is super easy to use and beginner friendly. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to export this loop for your own portfolio or see where Spline really shines with reactive web design, making it perfect for your website. A massive thank you to Spline for sponsoring this video. And once you've gone over to spline.design and created your account, you'll be greeted with this screen. You'll see plenty of awesome free templates to get you started, but we're going to go up to the top right corner and hit new file. We're now in the world of 3D. First, we want to go to the bottom of the window and change this view from orthographic to perspective. To move around the viewport, we can use the spacebar or middle mouse button and drag, and to rotate, we can hold Alt or Option and click and drag. To zoom in and out, we can use our mouse wheel. You'll see to your left here is the objects window. To our right, we have the parameters window, which is where you'll find all your position, rotation and scale. We can also add materials over here, but we'll come back to this later. Now let's get to actually creating something. First, let's click the rectangle and just hit delete so that we have a clean scene with just a light source. The top toolbar here is where you'll find all your objects. We're going to go ahead and click the plus button and then go down and select Taurus. Now you'll notice we get a red window pop up and this is our object bounding box. We can just click in the center to place it. Now you'll notice we have a few new options in our parameter window with our object selected. We can change its size, position and rotation. We can also change the tube size and sides. Sides are also known as subdivisions in the 3D world. You're essentially adding more points to the geometry to make its interpolation smoother. You'll also notice we have slice which will trim our shape and also a corner which will round our endpoints. There's a few more settings here too to add materials, change its visibility and there's also the capability of cloners and collisions. Now if we turn on cloners, cloners are like a shape repeater and it will repeat your object. You can change its type from linear to radial or even create a grid system. Now changing the count will add more or reduce the number of them and you can also play with the randomness too. While I won't be diving into it in this video, it's great fun to play with. So I'm just going to turn that cloner off and back under the shape parameters, I'm going to zero out my position on the X, Y and Z. And on my rotations, I'm going to change this to 0, 0 and 45 on the Z. Now on my slice parameter, I'm going to set this down to 270 and then we have this three quarter looking ring. Now we're also going to animate this and animation in Spline is super easy. You don't need to keyframe a bunch of different parameters. It uses something called states. So I'm going to go up to the states tab in this window here and click the plus button to add a new one. Now my base state is already set with those rotations we did. So I'm going to click the new state and in my Z rotation, I'm going to type in 45 plus 360. Spline can do the maths for you, which is much faster than me working this out manually. If I click between my two states, while they both look the same, you'll actually notice our Z rotation is different. And this is what we want in order to create a seamless loop. Now on the events tab, we want to hit the plus button and this dialog box will pop up. We're going to click transition and it will create a new action for us. We're going to click this and set number one as base state and number two as state. You can rename the states if you wish to. Now this number here is the amount of time it will take in seconds to complete the movement. So I'm just going to change this to five. And if we click where it says easing out, we can actually change this too. It allows for custom easing and there is a built-in overshoot which is called spring. But we're going to go with linear to keep this loop moving. Now under sequence, you'll see loop and we can change this to infinite. This will just continuously loop the transition we've just made. To preview our animation, we can come to the top toolbar and hit the play button. And there's your first 3D animation, but we can make this much better. So let's copy our torus by selecting it in the object window and pressing Ctrl or Command C and then pasting with Ctrl or Command V. I'm then going to alter my base state on the new torus and under rotation set the X and Z to minus 90. Then under the second state I'm going to set the X to minus 90 and the Z to 270. And on both states we also want to set the X to 35. Now again if we hit play we'll have two of these moving toruses. Now I want to add some objects in between these cuts. So let's start by creating a new sphere by coming up to the toolbar, pressing the plus button and clicking sphere. 
And this is obviously way too big, so let's size it down. Now we can click the object in the viewport and drag these cubes here to change the size. And if we hold shift, it will do it uniformly. So let's size it down to around 20. We can also change its position in the viewport. So let's drag these handles too. Red is your X axis, green is your Y, and blue is your Z. I'm going to just rotate around my viewport by holding Alt and clicking and dragging just so I can see to get things in the right position. Now, the great thing is we don't actually need to reanimate this. We can simply drag the sphere object underneath our torus. This makes it a child of the object, meaning it will now be affected by any movement on the torus. If we hit play again, you'll see the new sphere now rotates around with the torus. Now, I'm going to repeat that process, but this time I'm going to use a cube. So I'll go up to the toolbar and hit the plus to create a cube. And I'm just going to place this anywhere in the viewport. And then we're going to size this down to 10 by 10 by 10. It's super round, so I want to reduce its corner number to 2. I'm going to manually position this in between the cuts of my second torus using the axis handle like we just did. When we're happy with its position, I'm then again going to drag the cube under the torus in the object window to make it a child. We can hit play and now the cube moves with it too. We can, however, add extra animation to this as the cube is still its own object. So again, I'm going to add a state to this cube. And I'm happy with my base state, but on my second state, I'm going to change the Z rotation to minus 360. While we still have the cube selected, I'm going to create a new event and select transition. And I'm going to click that. And again, under my state one, I'm going to change it to base state and state two to state. Once more, I'm going to change the duration to five seconds so it matches our torus and change the easing to linear. Under sequence, I'm going to set the loop to infinite. And now if we hit play, we have a seamless loop in 3D and it was super fast to make. Now let's make this look a little nicer by adding some materials. Just to mention, if you do sign up to Spline Super, you will get access to a huge material library, which makes it super easy to change the look of your scene. It will save you a bunch of time as you can just click to apply different materials to your objects. However, if you don't have this, don't worry, as I'm going to guide you through creating a material of our own. If we select an object, we can go to the material tab here and we have two options lighting and color we can alter these but it looks a little flat so let's hit that plus button and add a new layer and we can change to some cool things now we can have an image a gradient a rainbow and even a video which is pretty awesome i'm going to change it to depth if we click the depth layer you'll notice a window will open and some handles appear in the viewport and we can move these handles around similar to using a gradient effect I'm just going to bring these handles in closer together and then change the colors to something a little more interesting. I'm also going to add another layer and this time I'm going to choose matte cap. And now we have this cool kind of reflective look to it. So you can actually go in and change this and I want a plain one here. I'm just going to close that off and by clicking this little spring button here, we can actually change its blending mode and I'm going to change it to overlay. Now we have this really cool looking shiny material. I'm going to come over to my object window and right click this and go to copy material. Then I'm going to select my other objects and hit paste material to apply it to my other objects. Now feel free to play around this material or create new ones of your own. There's plenty to explore and I'd love to see what you come up with. So tag me on Instagram or Twitter too. Now we're ready for exporting and this is where you might use Spline to check with your team or client and get some feedback on your project. Spline allows you to add extra collaborators or editors to your project, making it super easy for that instant feedback feedback. All you need to do is come up to the top right and hit the share button and then you'll be greeted with a link. Now you can either copy this link and send it to people yourself and you can change their status from viewer to editor or only people invited can open this link. You can also type in email addresses and change the status from viewer to editor as well. But where Spline really shines is exporting for web. Now you can actually put this loop straight into your website and also have it interactive. Again, Spline will generate you the necessary code that you need for your website that you can copy and paste straight in. You can also change all of its play settings for the website as well, and that'll update the code too. This makes it super easy to update your designs on the fly and get them instantly into your websites. And there you have it, your first 3D loop in Spline. Now loops are great fun to make and you can see just how easy it is to do using Spline. And here's some more examples of 3D loops made by other members of the Spline community to inspire you to create your own.